Hi there. Um, this is a, a demonstration video on how to control Qlux from your iPad. Okay, uh, the, the first step on the computer end would be to actually purchase and install Osculator. And um, after that point, you'd open up a file. Um, the file I opened is called MidiCon RIP. Um, so with MidiCon RIP open, um, Osculator is actually going to be doing all the conversions between the names of the OSC messages on the left, um, the type of uh, MIDI note or CC, and then the value, um, as well as the more complicated um, parts right here that I've already worked out. All right, uh, so from this point, we have Oscular open, we have our file open. Um, now the next thing to do is open up, in this case is emulation or Qlux, it's really the, uh, the same thing. So you're opening up emulation or Qlux. All right, <clears throat> so we're loading our file. Okay, so with our file loaded, uh, we go into the options menu. From the options menu, we're gonna go down to our MIDI tab and make sure the map we're using is the iPad MIDICon map. Um, this file has to be installed in your, on your computer. And um, let's see if I can find the directory for you. Let's see. It's going to be in your user. In this case, it's Elation, but if you're using Qlux, it would probably be Visual uh, Productions. Elation, that's wrong. Emulation, then here you go, mini maps. So. They would be, it would be considered a user MIDI map. Uh, it's important to put it in the user folder that way if you upgrade to a newer version of uh, emulation or Qlux that it doesn't get overwritten. So there's our file. It has to be in that directory for it to see it. Um, so on our MIDI tab we're going to user, iPad MIDICon, and then for input output device um, we're going to go to oscillator out and oscillator in. Um, that's what's going to tell it to uh, send the commands. Um, 8000 is our port number by default. Okay, so on the computer end, we are all set to go. Uh, I'm going to turn on my camera over here and start demonstrating the iPad end. Okay, so on my iPad end over here, as you see, this is the iPad home screen. Um, we're going to go into the Touch OSC app, which is a $5 purchase from the, uh, the App Store. And then we're going to go into our Information tab, top right. Um, and you go to the top bar, and this is OSC. At the bottom it says found hosts uh, MacBook Pro 8000 oscillator. So uh, using, they call it Bonjour, um, they're able to actually see each other for easy configuration. So in most cases you won't even have to touch this area right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select my proper host. It'll change my host name accordingly, which is great. Um, we're going to go back into the main menu over here. And then for the layout, here's our, um, our iPad layouts. Um, for this demonstration I'm going to show you the MIDICon. Um, so then we're all done. So from here we're going to hit done. That's what it looks like to move the faders. You know, you have control over... <clears throat> Here's all of your playback faders. Um, what's really great about the playback faders is that um, there's also dimmers involved. So as you bring this up, if you look at 5 and 6 up top here, it's actually giving you like a quick like dimming preview, um, which is nice to give you like a quick reference if you're using your fader playbacks for dimmers. Now, um, as you can see on the computer over here, um, this particular bank only has one playback right here on, on uh, playback fader 8, so, and it's set to fader start. So in this situation, when I move my fader up, um, I actually have it so that this little box turns red, which shows you that that is an active um, playback. Um, that's really important to know for when you change banks. So as you go to change banks, you can tell, you can easily see which bank um, has active playbacks versus non-active playbacks, which is really important, especially if you're looking to release things or you know turn things off like so. Um, so right here we have our uh, playback fader um, bank um, button right here, and what's really great about this, this which which is really awesome actually is that even on the computer, if I change the bank number on the computer, it will change it on the iPad, and they will always be in sync with each other, which is really nice. Um, our playback button banks um, are right up top here. As you can see, they also change, oh, sorry, 
They also change numbers with the computer. All right, uh, let's see. Right here we have uh, your, your master dimmer in the middle, as well as a blackout button. Um, so here's your blackout, here's this. Um, these buttons right here are the software equivalent of the MIDI-Cons touch-sensitive buttons. Um, right now they're MIDI-mapped, um, at least the first few ones are MIDI-mapped, to different pages inside the programmer window. So right now this will put me on position, this will put me on color mix, color fix, uh, gobo, etc. So this will this will get you to different parts of the, the programming page. Um, these right here are um, the equivalent of the MIDI cons encoders. So um, if you select a fixture in the software, um, let's see, I'll, I'll click on an LED, and then we from here we could go to uh, color mix, and once we're on color mix, these will actually change your RGB values in this situation, which is actually great. So you can actually make your own um, you know, color combinations, or whatever, really. Um, so that, that's really cool. This button selects nothing, which deselects everything. Um, this button moves to your left through the um, fixtures. This button moves to the right. Um, and this is your tap at the bottom. As you can see on the computer, the tap tempo is going right there. All right, now on the iPad up top, next to our bag numbers, we also have stack, release, record, load, delete, and clear. Um, which line up on the computer end all over here, um, which is kind of nice. Uh, let's see, what else to show you? Oh, I'll show you the XY axis. Now, um, using our tab buttons for left and right, I'm going to tab over to my track spot over here on the computer right there. And then I'm going to go to the position tab, which is tab 2. Um, now from here, I, I'm going to click on the top right tab on the iPad and I will have control over the XY axis um, in a touch way which is really great for uh, for focusing and setting your positions and as you can see it just is incredibly responsive um, it's really the, in, in my opinion the best way to do it um, so that, that shows you how to control the XY axis now if you wanted to select a different fixture um, back in this menu you'd go over and you tab next over to your track spot uh, number two or whatever your moving fixture is and then tab over again like that and that that way you can um, you know position all your fixtures